and welcome to LGU Monthly, the show that brings you all the news and action from the ladies amateur game over the last month. We're here at the home of golf for one of the most popular events on the ladies calendar. Here's what's coming up. Work for the home internationals as England look to make it five in a row. We take a closer look at the development of the ladies golf union. Hunstanton is the venue for this year's Senior Ladies British Open Championship. And for the grand final here at St Andrews, 35,000 players have been whittled down to 32 for the Peugeot Coronation Foursomes. More from here at St Andrews later, but first we're going to go to the 2012 Home Internationals. With Team Golf being brought to the fore after that stunning victory in the Curtis Cup back in June, the home nations are keen to keep that momentum going. England are looking for their fifth consecutive title, and on paper, they're looking the strongest team. Founded in 1888, the Cork Golf Club has played host to many top amateur and professional championships. In early September, the home internationals were held here. This fiercely contested event brings together the cream of women's amateur golf from Great Britain and Ireland. This tournament's been going on for 100 years, over 100 years, uh, very keenly contested by all four countries in the um, home internationals. And Gillis, our co-superintendent and the staff, have done a tremendous job to get the course into the condition that it's in at the moment and I think it's been enjoyed by all the competitors and spectators alike. The girls are all thoroughly enjoying it. It's an Alistair McKenzie design course so um, it's got some spectacular holes and uh, everybody's enjoying playing on this course. The England side boasted three of the winning Curtis Cup team and set down a marker with a 9-0 whitewash of Ireland on day one. Wales, led by Amy Bolden, won their opening day match against Scotland 6-3, equaling England's point after the first day. On day two, England would take on Scotland in the second of their matches. The strong pairing of Kelly Tidy and Alex Peters were again paired together. Tidy, a member of the Curtis Cup team in June, and Peters, the English women's stroke play champion, made short work of the Scottish pair of Laura Murray and Alison McCurchin, winning the match 7-5. The English pair of Holly Clyburn and Bronte Law had been partners on the opening morning of the Curtis Cup. They were rocked at the 16th hole as Stirling University's Ailey Briggs sank the winning putt for a 3-2 and two win with her partner Jane Turner. In the third match of the morning foursomes, it was honours even between Georgia Hall and Emily Taylor and the Scottish pairing of Kelsey MacDonald and Rachel Watton. Amy Bolden and Becky Harris had lost their opening match on day one against Scotland, but were five up after five holes against the Irish pairing of Mary Dowling and Jessica Carty. Five up after five, read one up after 13, as the home team, desperate to make amends after the day one whitewash, began to fight back. After what was a brief scare for the Welsh pairing, it was left to Bolden to sink the winning putt for a two and one victory, much to the pair's relief. We were playing well at the start, but they were just making a few mistakes to begin with. Um, and then we ended up making a few mistakes as well. We held it together in the end, though. This very young Irish team didn't have to wait long for its first point, though, as Deirdre Smith and Chloe Ryan won 2-1 and one against O'Connor and Burks. In the last of the foursomes, Wales, Chloe Williams and Katie Bradbury were three down after four holes, but by the turn were all square against Gillian O'Leary and Sarah Cunningham. And at the 18th, O'Leary had a putt to half the match for Ireland. She missed, giving Wales its second point and the league going into the afternoon singles matches. Yeah, it was a bit of a battle. I mean, like, putts weren't dropping for us and things like that, but we finally got it in the end, didn't we? Yeah. Made a few, good few up and downs and things like that to finish. And so to the afternoon singles. England's Emily Taylor continued her fine form over the week with a 7-5 and five win over Rachel Walker to give the defending champion the first point. The match was squared up again by Rachel Watton as she stepped up to the senior ranks with a 6-5 and five win over Holly Clyburn. Kelly Tidy was unbeaten in the championship and had won her day one singles 8-7. and seven. She was pushed a little harder by Ailey Briggs but ran out a winner by 3-1. and one. The match was again all square as Kelsey McDonald beat the world number four ranked player Georgia Hall one up. Amber Ratcliffe and Lauren White went toe to toe down the stretch. White winning 15, Ratcliffe 16, White 17, and Ratcliffe 18 for a half point. So it came down to the final match. Bronte Law's encounter with Jane Turner was an epic. Only two holes in the 18 played would be halved, but it would be Law who would win the final three holes for a two up win and seal the second point for England. Only Wales with a victory over Ireland could deny England the fifth consecutive title. They got off to the perfect start as Chloe Williams prevailed six and four. 
Katie Bradbury won her match five and four, and the big wins kept on coming with Becky Harris's six and four victory over Chloe Ryan. If my driving was a lot better this afternoon. My um, irons were very good, and my putting was, I was two putting, one putting everywhere, so it's really good. With only a half point needed, it was Amy Bolden who sealed the point for Wales. England and Wales were now level with two wins each, with the final match between Jessica Carty and Jess Evans halved as well. If the match on day three were to be halved, it would go on a count back to the number of victories over the three days. And with that 9-0 win on day one, it was looking good for the defending champions. Any day you come out with a win is good. The girls played well, it was a hard day out there, but they came out on top, which is the main thing. We're going to go out there, all guns blazing tomorrow, and see what we can do. We really want it. So it was all set up for what would be a tense final day. In the matchup for third and fourth place, Scotland compounded a miserable week for Ireland with another whitewash in the morning foursomes. Kelsey MacDonald and Rachel Watton winning five and four. And two and one wins for Alison McKeekin and Lauren White, and the pair of Ailey Briggs and Jane Turner. But in a dramatic turnaround, Ireland lost only one of their singles matches and snatched the point 5 4. And so to the final, Georgia Hall, the world number four and the British girls amateur champion, paired together with the Irish women's open stroke play champion, Emily Taylor. They took the first point for England with a four and two win over Bolton and Harris. Bronte Law and Holly Clyburn will play all three matches together. At the 16th, the English duo were down to Chloe Williams and Katie Bradbury, but this sublime second shot saw the match back to all square. On 18, Law had a putt to win the match. But it would slide by and the match would finish with a half point each. In the final encounter, the Welsh pair of Bradbury and Evans would take on the unbeaten pairing of Tidy and Peters in a game that would swing one way and then the other. But it would be the Welsh pair that would close out their match on the 17th, winning two and one, squaring the final. It's really important to try and get as many points, especially off England, as possible. And to be sort of level pegging going into lunch is, is really good, but still work to do. The opener of the Wales-England singles was Amy Bolden and Kelly Tidy. Often partnered together for Great Britain and Ireland, they were now on opposing teams, but it would be Bolden who would take the spoils 3-1. and one. Holly Clyburn had had a mixed week by her standards, but would run out a 6-4 and four winner over Gemma Bradbury to even things up. Georgia Hall would swing the advantage back to England with a 2-1 and one win over Chloe Williams. But as the match ebbed and flowed, Wales came back again on 18 with Katie Bradbury's one-up win. Becky Harris was delighted with her 4-3 and three victory over Bronte Law, which meant Wales couldn't lose the match. But a win for Amber Ratcliffe on the 16th over Jess Evans meant the match was a draw. However, England's greater points tally meant they retained the title for the fifth year in a row. I believe they may well have been the uh, winning points for England. I think so, yeah. It feels pretty good, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's my first ladies' home international, so it's really good. It had been the closest home internationals for years, and in every team, the emergence of some very promising new names. Oh, that was so close. And how crucial was that 9-0 whitewash of Ireland on the opening day for England? The LGU has been the backbone of women's golf worldwide since its inception. But in recent years, it's been undergoing a radical modernisation. Founded in 1893 by Izette Pearson, the Ladies Golf Union have been the instigators of many radical changes to the women's game, giving it a new look and feel. Next year we celebrate our 120th anniversary, so we've been there a long, long time, you know, longer than, than most organisations. Um, and sometimes you can, you can be looked at as a crowd of old fuddy-duddies. Um, and I think we're beginning to change that a little bit. I just think that uh, we need to just keep pushing these boundaries and, and make sure that people realise we've been about a long time, but it doesn't mean to say we're complacent. We celebrate our traditions, but we're not constrained by them when we want to move forward on that.
we've now got a, a modern, forward-looking organisation. Um, all of the board have been totally supportive in moving things forward, and uh, our, our main priority now is actually to um, start raising the profile of women's golf um, and through the media, through our LGU monthly that we've been running for the last two years, um, and really just getting the message out there that, that golf is a game for life, and I think we really want to promote that um, going forward. I think the Curtis Cup is uh, really a catalyst for us to, to make things happen and we're certainly looking to, to raise the profile of golf by using that as, as one of our, our triggers. I think we started the season on a high, um, hard to sort of keep up that momentum. I mean winning the Curtis Cup at Nairn in such a dramatic fashion uh, and a big comeback. Uh, it was, was a real plus. When the Curtis Cup for the first time since 1996 just shows what a, a strong position um, GB&I Ladies Golf is in at the moment. And I suppose for us the icing on the cake was um, that it was the fourth of the international team matches. Uh, we had the Walker Cup, we had the Solheim, we had the Ryder Cup and now we've got the Curtis Cup and we're not going to let go of that very easily. And they are no strangers to the world of corporate golf. Rico first came on board in 2007 when we played over the old course in St Andrews and they've been great sponsors, they're, they're very easy to work with. The synergies between our organisation, um, Rico and indeed IMG, who are our partners in, in this uh, championship, uh, are, are absolutely first class. To see the passion um, that people have for, for golf, the connection with our business and our employees has been really, really good. So hence it was a natural decision for us to extend the partnership for three, four, three more years up to when it could be the 2016 championship. We are going to be involved in the Olympics in 2016 and for, for golf that's that's quite a big focus. I think we're all committed to women's golf and we want to move it forward. We know we've been about for a long, long time and you know the LG really will I think in the coming years be the voice of women's golf. If you look at all these, these youngsters coming through, um, it, it does look as though ladies golf is in very safe hands going forward. There's still lots more to come on LGU Monthly. After the break, we head to Norfolk for the Senior Ladies British Open Championship. And here at St Andrews, the climax of the 2012 Peugeot Coronation Foursomes. The Senior Ladies British Open Championship is regarded as one of the top senior events in the world. 
Outside of the US, it is the title that everyone wants to win. An international field was assembled at Hunstanton Golf Club in Norfolk for what would prove to be a real test for the senior ladies. Hunstanton Golf Club is one of the unsung links in Britain. Home for the 2012 Senior Ladies Open Championship, it would provide a stern test. International fields, a tough course and a very high standard of golf. It's a very difficult golf course and it's playing really difficult. And yes, we've got players from Spain and Finland, Germany, all over. It's a tremendous standard. The uh, players are much better than they ever were before. The LGU is all about ladies golf. It's not about uh, the, the elite only. So obviously tournaments like this and other tournaments run around the country are very, very important to the LGU, so yeah. Helen Jones was looking to make it a treble for Port Rush, following in the footsteps of Stephanie Meadow and Alan Dunbar as amateur champions. She would be partnered in the final group with Spain's de Velasco, the leader after two rounds at six over par. So, going into the final round, there were two Spaniards in the top three, separated by Royal Port Rush's Helen Jones. Irish international Pat Doran was looking to go one better than the previous year, where she was runner-up to England's Felicity Christie, who had failed to make the cut. That was for birdie at the first. Overnight leader Ruiz de Velasco opened with a bogey. It could have been much worse, but for this sublime chip. Same story for Helen Jones. That's a bogey. Catherine Russell from Royal Ashton Forest was the first to make a move on the leaders with back-to-back -back birdies to get within two of the lead. Christine Quinn had finished second in 2007. She also made a move with four straight pars. She could have tied for the lead had she made this eagle at the fifth. Pat Doran, after a bogey at the second, was moving steadily up the leaderboard with pars as the weather started to bite. It was a final group that was having a miserable time. Jones with a double bogey on the third and Ruiz de Velasco dropping six shots in her opening six holes. As the conditions worsened, the standard of golf seemed to rise. Christine Watson from Beaconsfield nearly holed out for an albatross on the 11th. Finland's Mina Karnalati was putting together a stunning round. Out in three under par, the Finn put herself into contention with an eagle at the 11. She did have a birdie chance on 17. Missing that and one on 18. She had now set the clubhouse target at 10 over with a superb one under par 74. Irish international Sheena McElroy was one under for her back nine and had a chance to join the Finn at 10 over. Catherine Russell had been quietly going about her business. Out in 38 and back in 36, she would set the mark for the rest of the field to chase at nine over par. The Sussex golfer was looking to emulate Prue Ridderford, who won the title in 1982 and 1986. Pat Doran's round was about to spark into life at the 11th, with a birdie putt that would see her charge up the leaderboard. Three more birdies would follow before a testing four-footer on the 18th, which would see her finish at nine over par. Jane Rees would finish with a 77 and tie for fourth with McElroy and Christine Quinn. So it would be a sudden death playoff between Pat Doran, still searching for that first title, and the relatively unknown Catherine Russell. The first would be the opening hole of the playoff. With conditions still poor, both players had been in trouble from the tee. Russell missed her par putt from about 25 feet, leaving Doran with a chance to take the title. Go, go, go. 
Up the 18th, Russell hit possibly shot of the day with a stunning approach to set up a birdie opportunity. Doran's second shot got caught up at the front of the green and she was left with a tricky chip for her third. Just a foot short from being perfect, her chance had gone. The 2012 title would be taken by Catherine Russell at the second extra hole. A debut win and future England selection must now be on the cards. I've only won one championship before, and that was the, the Sussex Championship, and um, that was also this year, and uh, so it's been a good year. So I've very much enjoyed it. What a fantastic win there for Catherine Russell in such horrendous conditions. But your heart must go out to Pat Doran, who's been runner-up now for the last three years. In other news this month, congratulations to Ireland, who won all three matches on their way to the 2012 Seniors Home Internationals title. And the world of golf mourns the passing of Phil Wiley at the age of 101. Wiley played in the 1938 Curtis Cup for Great Britain and Ireland. I'm here now at the Peugeot Coronation Foursome's Welcome Drinks reception. It's become one of the biggest tournaments worldwide, with 35,000 competitors teeing off, and it's whittled down to only 32 pairings for this grand final. As the name suggests, the tournament started in 1953 in recognition of Queen Elizabeth coming to the throne and the winners of this tournament have the honour of playing in the Rico Women's British Open Pro-Am next year. So there was definitely a feeling of fun before the fight as the competitors from all over the land got to know each other before attempting to subdue the Eden at St Andrews. But in the conditions provided, that would be a tall order. Well, I couldn't believe it when we got, we got to our rooms there today and I said, Mary, I can't believe I'm looking out at the bridge. It's the bridge. <laughs> We've met our playing partners and they're absolutely, they're Essex girls and we're the Galway girls, so they're great fun and we're all up for it. You could say that the LGU just concentrates on elite golf, on the British Championships, on the Great Britain Island teams, but this is a great opportunity for us to actually reach club golfers. And as I said, 30,000 um, uh, players started this competition and we're down to just 16 couples. Competition day arrived, as did some pretty inclement weather. To anyone not au fait with Lynx Golf, this was a very dramatic baptism. Waterproofs were the order of the day, as was a sense of humour. However, there was a big prize at stake for the winners, so there was no dulling of the ladies' competitive nature. The humps and bumps of the Eden gave all 16 teams a proper tryout and the day especially difficult in the foursomes format. But rule number one, in alternate shot play, never say you're sorry. Galway Bay was represented by Fiona Carroll and Mary Ryan, feeling very at home in the blustery weather and just missing out on the win when they finished third with 31 points. But top of the class were a couple of Essex girls, Tina Hollyoak, who played off 17, and Elaine Cochran, off of 15, both from Manor of Groves, whose 33-point total was good enough to win on a countback from Shaw Hill's Diane Melling and Jean Sidebottom. Congratulations all round. Well played, considering the conditions. But you won't be going home in that. It's a single seater. And anyway, where do you put the luggage? Not very nice out there. Not very nice. Congratulations to Tina Holyoke and Elaine Cochran on becoming the Peugeot Coronation Foursomes champions. And that's it for this year, where there have been some amazing highlights. Georgia Hall, Stephanie Meadow, and of course, Catherine Russell winning the individual titles. But the highlight has to be Great Britain and Ireland's victory in the Curtis Cup. We're going to leave you now with a few memories of that momentous weekend in June. You can never get bored of watching this. Until next time, bye for now.